Hello, I'm Professor John Kelly and this is the Weber Auto YouTube channel. Today we are coming to you from our brand new building on the Weber State University Davis campus in Layton, Utah. So I'm very happy to be here in this building. Today we are going to look at the incredible Honda E-Drive hybrid transaxle. Now this transaxle is used in the new CRV hybrid. It's also used in the Insight. It's also used in the Accord hybrid and the Clarity plug-in hybrid. So four different vehicles use this design of hybrid transaxle. This transaxle has three different primary modes of operation. I'm going to show you all three of those. One of those modes is a series hybrid mode. Yes, a series hybrid mode. So that is different than what Honda has used for many, many years. The old integrated motor assist or the IMA system that came out in the late 1990s and was used all the way up through 2016 in the last version of the Insight and many other uh, Honda vehicles. So this is the new E-Drive system. In the sales literature, they call it an ECVT, an electronic continuously variable transmission. But that's only one of the three modes, three primary modes of operation. So let's take a look at the first mode of operation, and that is EV mode, electric vehicle mode, where it can run on electric power only. So here in the front housing, the, the bell housing area of the transaxle, we have a valve body, an oil filter, and two oil pumps. Uh, one oil pump is driven when the engine is running. The other oil pump is driven when the vehicle is moving. So for EV mode, we have to have a final drive. The, the differential that allows your front wheels to turn at different speeds as you turn corners. So this is the differential out of this particular uh, vehicle. This transaxle I have is out of a 2019 Honda Accord Hybrid, but they're all very similar. So we have the differential uh, gear, gear set along with the final driven gear right here. Get some lubrication dams there. We're going to set that in. And there is a counter shaft. And both of these have to go in together. There we go. Okay, I've installed the differential and the counter shaft. Now, the differential driven gear and the counter shaft drive gear for the final drive uh, have uh, 65 teeth on the ring gear, 19 teeth on the counter gear, which gives us a gear ratio of 3.421 to 1. And that's true on all of the Hondas that use this E-Drive system or ECVT system, except for the new 2020 and above CRV hybrid. And it has a 3.882 to 1 gear ratio. And they did that by uh, increasing the gear teeth from 65 to 66 on the, the final driven gear and decreasing the gear teeth from 19 down to 17 on the, f the final drive gear. So a little bit higher numerical gear ratio, which gives it a little bit more torque. Now, in all three modes of operation, the, f the final drive is driven by this gear right here, the counter shaft gear. And so whether we're in electric vehicle mode or engine only mode or hybrid mode, they all drive this counter gear, which drives the final drive gear, which turns the final driven gear. Your axle half shafts come in. Uh, let's see, this would be the driver's side and then your passenger side would be going the other way if we had this tilted up as it's installed in the vehicle. 
So no matter what, this gear ratio, the 3.421, remains steady in all three uh, modes of operation unless you have the new CRV hybrid, which has a 3.882 uh, gear ratio. Okay, now let's look at, in electric vehicle mode, what rotates this counter drive gear right here. So to do that, we have another gear shaft that I need, I need to bring in. And we'll talk about what this gear does a little bit later. But right now, it is going to act as a support for what's called the motor gear. And the motor gear is going to mesh with this counter gear right here. And there's a great big electric motor that slides on right here. So now, let me bring in the motor. Here's the rotor of the electric motor. I have the stator in the, in the housing behind me. Let me put this up on here. There we go. Okay, this motor, as you can see here on my uh, labels, is rated at 135 kilowatts, which is 183.6 horsepower. This is called the motor. Uh, in all the Honda literature, and there's another smaller one called a generator that we'll talk about later. But don't be fooled into thinking that this is like any other two electric motor hybrid uh, out there. This is not. This is this is different. Um, so this has 315 newton meters of torque, or 232 pound force of torque uh, as its maximum. And if we rotate it in this direction, the teeth on the motor drive gear right here are 22. And then there are 54 teeth on the counter gear right there. And that gives us a gear ratio of 2.455 gear reduction. So it takes 2.455 rotations of the electric motor rotor to rotate the counter shaft one rotation and then it takes another 3.421 to rotate the the final drive gear uh, over here and if you multiply those two together you get an overall gear ratio of 8.395 to 1 which means as you're driving down the road and the rotor would spin in this direction to make the vehicle move forward we would have to rotate this rotor 8.395 times to get one revolution of your final driven gear, differential case, and your axle half shafts that connect out to your hub and bearing assemblies and tires and wheels and make you move down the road. So this is electric vehicle mode. Notice there's no engine connection. We just take power from the battery, run it through the inverter, uh, and create three phase AC power. This is an internal per permanent magnet rotor right here. And we just rotate this. And this mode is on by default every time you get in the vehicle and power it on and drive away. And the only limit on the speed is the top speed of the vehicle. You can stay in this electric mode as, as fast as you want to drive it. Uh, or as fast as it'll let you drive it uh, within the legal speed limit or, or uh, higher. Uh, I believe it was rated at 87 miles an hour or 140 kilometers uh, per hour was the maximum speed in EV mode. So that's EV mode only. So uh, once again, we use power to drive the motor to make the vehicle move down the road. Yes, we have regenerative braking. So now instead of turning the rotor to make the final drive gear rotate, the tires through the half shafts into the side gears of our open differential here are going to turn the final drive gear. And that will cause the rotor to spin 8.39 times faster than the tires which can give us regenerative braking depending on the state of charge of the battery and, and several other things. 
but that would help put power back into the battery. All right, so this is just EV mode uh, for uh, regular driving. All right, next, let's go into engine only mode. So if you have a hybrid vehicle, reaching 87 miles an hour in EV mode is probably not going to happen. And if it does, it won't last very long because you will run out of battery power. Um, but if you have the Honda Clarity plug-in hybrid, then that will give you some additional battery power that will allow you to drive uh, a certain number of miles on that battery range. And you, yes, you could continue driving clear up to as high as 87 miles an hour. But you will reach a point where driving the electric motor won't be as efficient as just running the internal combustion engine. Now this typically starts around 62 miles per hour or 100 kilometers per hour. And in engine only mode, we directly connect the engine's crankshaft that rotates to our final drive countershaft and, and dr drive and driven gear uh, here. So let's see how we do that. So this is the flywheel that connects to the back of the engine crankshaft. It has a permanently applied clutch uh, in here. This permanently applied clutch disc uh, is there as a safety breakaway if for some reason something in the transmission or something in the engine seized up. Uh, it would allow this to slip and allow for a difference in the speed of those two uh, pieces. But uh, all hybrids have some sort of a, a clutch like this. But the main point I wanted to point out here is there's a set of splines here in the middle. So this crank or this flywheel is rotated by the crankshaft. There's some splines right there. And there's a gear right here called the input shaft. So it literally has the input shaft that connects to the flywheel right there and if the flywheel rotates so does this input shaft now the input shaft has a multiple plate clutch disc set up inside of it there's a couple of seals down there and a hydraulic passage that comes down and you can see down inside here there are little notches of the clutch disc itself but if we slide that on here and add an additional gear, this is called the overdrive gear. Now remember, we're talking about driving down the road in engine only mode. And uh, it's called the overdrive gear because the gear ratio we end up getting is an overdrive gear ratio if you were to compare that to any other automatic transmission out there. So let me set this down in. I want you to notice that the input shaft gear and the overdrive gear are not connected together. But there's an overdrive clutch right there that if we take some compressed air we can apply it simulating the pressurized fluid that would come from the uh, oil pump and the valve body. If I hit air to this passage here to apply this, this clutch, um, the whole thing should rotate. So right now, it's, it's free, but if I apply it, So we have a gear that we can connect to the engine or disconnect from the engine that will 
turn the counter shaft gear over here to drive us down the road. Well, let's put all this in the housing over here and see how it works. Okay, there's our input shaft and gear. installed. Here comes our overdrive clutch pack installed. Got a bearing and then our overdrive gear So now you can see this overdrive gear that we can connect to the engine's uh, input shaft or disconnect now can turn the counter shaft gear which turns our count or our final drive gear and driven gear and the tires so if we rotate the flywheel underneath the the housing here I'm rotating the flywheel we will take the 67 teeth of our overdrive gear and drive the 54 teeth of the counter gear that will be overdriving it because the the overdrive gear is bigger and that overdrives it with a overdrive gear ratio of 0 0.8059 so it's a, it's a 20 percent overdrive and then that drives our 3.421 gear reduction so for the final drive so if you multiply those two together now we have an overall engine to tires gear ratio of 2.757 and that's on everything except for the crv hybrid okay so that's engine only mode we come in apply the clutch and drive with the engine crankshaft but that can only work at higher vehicle speeds because with an overdrive gear ratio of 0 0.8 uh, you can't slow down very slow without loading the engine too much and so this mode the engine only mode uh, starts at around 62 miles an hour uh, at, or 100 kilometers per hour and goes up to the top speed of the vehicle all right now that is the, our second mode. Our first mode was electric vehicle mode only. Our second mode is engine only. Notice there's no electric motors involved in engine only. Uh, before we look at our third mode, I want to show you uh, the purpose of this shaft right here. So this shaft comes in and splines right to the input shaft of the transmission that turns at engine crankshaft speed so if I put that in there just like that this uh, gear has 39 teeth and the engine uh, input shaft gear has 76 and if you do the math on that uh, it is overdriving this little shaft uh, almost two to one uh, has a gear ratio of 0 0.513 to 1, which is 1.948 times faster than engine crankshaft speed. So this little shaft right here is turning almost twice as fast as engine RPM. So that is where we come in with our power generator rotor right here, and it splines right to the top. So any time whether the overdrive clutch is applied or not any time that engine is running it is also rotating this generator anytime now that doesn't mean it's charging because uh, with the inverter we have the ability to turn on or off the charge or anywhere in between but the capability is there so this uh, gives it a little bit more flywheel action uh, as well but this is rated at 106 kilowatts 
of power as its maximum output. Um, so that's that's pretty impressive um, for it, its capability. So now we have a generator that's capable of producing 106 kilowatts of power. Let's take that off for a moment while we put together the rest of the electric motor side of the transmission. Um, here is our motor, electric motor drive gear. It has some teeth on the bottom here where the parking gear can come and spline in place just like that. It rotates with the gear and then there's a parking pawl that will come in and grab one of those teeth and keep it from rotating when you put your transmission in park. And since that is splined directly to the counter shaft, it prevents your CV half shafts from rotating. But I'm going to leave that off in this demonstration. I'm going to put on the motor drive gear now. It only makes contact with the counter shaft. It does not contact the overdrive gear uh, from the engine. And now we will put on our motor right there, our 135 kilowatt motor. And we will put on our 106 kilowatt generator right there. So now we have completely assembled the uh, transaxle as far as the gear train is concerned. Okay, in the third mode of operation, we have the engine running and we use the electric motor uh, to move the vehicle down the road. With the, with the engine running, it is rotating the 106 kilowatt generator. Uh, and so it can turn it at any speed. So the engine RPM can go up and down and have nothing to do with vehicle speed because we have, we have not applied the overdrive clutch and we're not driving the overdrive gear. So the only thing the engine is doing at this point is turning this little tiny gear and shaft to turn this generator to create electrical power. Now that electrical power then is fed to the inverter where some of it could go to charge the battery. Uh, some of it, or, but the majority of it will come back to the electric motor to drive the vehicle down the road. So there's no direct mechanical connection between these two motors. And that is by definition a series hybrid. Now Honda's old IMA system was a parallel hybrid. This is a series hybrid. Uh, all the Toyota hybrids are, are series parallel. Uh, the Chrysler Pacifica is series parallel. Chevrolet has uh, one mode in their latest model Chevrolet Volt that is a series parallel operation. So there are different types of hybrids. Not all hybrids are equal. So I think this is a really cool design. Uh, I really like it. I, I, th I think it's well thought out. Uh, this is the second generation one right here. The first generation came out in the 2014 Honda Accord. Uh, this is the second generation. There's a third generation one. This is just a light overview of the Honda e-drive system. Uh, I will spend some more time with additional components. I've got a battery in the inverter and the DC to DC converter and everything else coming here shortly. But I, I thought that this was interesting enough uh, to show you something different out there. And, and Honda's known for that. They, they, they come up with a lot of unique ideas and a, a lot of really cool uh, ideas as well. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.